especially after the night before. Yeah. Climbing off the bus and going to work. Yeah. Well, I thought that women's game would be a little better than that. Okay, we're going to try to back time this thing. I've got about three minutes of Thomas. Hot mics. We ready? Are you looking for an exciting career? If so, then we're looking for you. Hitachi Energy is hiring full-time hourly team members at our Jeff City location with an average starting rate of $21 to $25 per hour. Full-time hires are eligible for benefits starting day one. An exciting career is waiting for you, so don't wait. Apply online today at hitachienergy.com slash career. News from Fulton. At Callaway Collision Center, we do more than just auto body work. And when we do auto body work, we do it right and we treat you right. Body work, alignments, mechanical repairs, we do it all. Callaway Collision Center, honest, dependable, and one of the best in the business. We are Callaway Collision Center, and we want to be your auto body specialist. Give us a call. At Popo's, we love our customers, and it looks like the feeling is mutual. Our family loves Popo's pizza. And we love the cookies, too. Their cheesy garlic bread is the best. The best pizza in Missouri, Popo's. Can't be the atmosphere, can't be the wings, the salad, everything is great. The best cookies anywhere. It's the best place to hang out with friends. Popo's is the best. It's our favorite pizza place. Popo's, come in and find out why people say we're the best. Every year, car manufacturers add more safety devices to protect you. And to protect me. Most of those cameras work through the windshield. At Mark's Mobile Glass, we've invested in equipment to recalibrate those safety systems after the windshield's replaced. A lot of companies don't offer recalibration. They might even tell you you don't need it. You may not need all of your lug nuts either. But we wouldn't recommend it. Our family at Mark's Mobile Glass always put your safety first. Mark's Mobile Glass is always learning, investing, and protecting. What matters most? It will be interesting. Um, you know, Matt's a friend of mine uh, for our, our first chance to coach against each other as head coaches. Coach, uh, your club looking to get back on track. You had a tough trip up to Canton, Missouri. Yeah, we did have a tough trip. Uh, you know, it felt like Friday we kind of gave one away. We, we were in control most of the way against Culver, and momentum just flipped on us late in the game and, and couldn't pull that one out. Um, but that's a learning experience and opportunity. Um, and then Saturday had to quick turnaround after an overtime game, you know, against a really good Iowa Wesleyan team. 
um, and just showed some signs. Um, played a really good first half. I think we kind of ran out of gas in the second half. But, um, you know, that's, that, that's a learning opportunity, our first road trip. Uh, but it will be good to be back in Southwell tonight. Your ball club, uh, some first experiences for some of these guys to get into a hostile environment. Yes, we you know we we do have a few returners that have been through that, um, but have, mixing in some new guys, um, and that was kind of their first opportunity to taste life on the road. Uh, you know, I had just had a couple things not really go our way. Our trend and our point guard fouled out late, and we missed some free throws. That was a little uncharacteristic, but. Um, you know, we got to put that behind us now we, and learn from it. But on to the next one. We got three games this week and we got to be ready to move forward. Well, and you build on, on the positives. I'm sure there were some positives. There were some positives, you know, and there's, there's stretches where we're playing really well and playing together. Um, and we talked about that yesterday in practice and, and on film. Um, and now we just got to string those together and, and be a little more consistent. Talked a little bit about uh, the different personnel on the Central Methodist Ball Club. What kind of problems will they present here tonight? They can really score it. They've been, you know, super efficient offensively. They got guards that can create their own shots, um, and they, they they shoot a lot of threes and, and um, are very capable three point shooters. So we got to do a good job. Uh, we talked to our guys about our transition defense, um, about you know guarding the ball and keeping guys in front, challenging shots, and then as always, uh, we need to rebound. This is the time of year where you got to look forward, don't you? Yeah, well, that's all you can do. Just you know, put your head down and keep keep moving forward and uh, see if we can get one tonight. Coach Thomas Brock, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks. Back with more in a moment. This is Cougar Basketball. It's been a crazy year. A Sylvan assessment will show you how your child's really doing. Then we can develop a plan to help her catch up in school and maybe get a bit ahead. Call 800-EDUCATE today and find out exactly what your child needs to succeed. Why wait? Pre-Black Friday savings are on now at the Shinin Family Furniture. Invest in your quality of life with great deals throughout our store. Like this buy one, get one recliner for only $6.99. Or this 12-inch queen hybrid mattress for only $5.99. Our sales floor is stocked and ready for you. So if you see it in our store, you can take it home today. The Pre-Black Friday sale. Going on now at the Shinin Family Furniture in Loose Creek and for sales. Are you looking for an exciting career? If so, then we're looking for you. Hitachi Energy is hiring full-time hourly team members at our Jeff City location with an average starting rate of $21 to $25 per hour. Full-time hires are eligible for benefits starting day one. An exciting career is waiting for you, so don't wait. Apply online today at hitachienergy.com career. Find out why people are saying Crustaceans is the best seafood restaurant in Colombia. A fast, casual counter service restaurant specializing in fresh, carefully prepared low country boil meals, seasoned to perfection and served with a smile. And of course, lunch specials and a happy hour from three to six. Crustacean Seafood, downtown Colombia, across from the Blue Note. Has your child hit a roadblock in school or gotten stuck while the rest of the class moves on? At Sylvan, our students learn up to three times faster than with just school alone. We'll help your child catch up, keep up, and get ahead. Visit sylvanlearning.com to get started. Pop was here last week. He was talking about Brooklyn and the place Brooklyn was at, how they were really like thriving right now. And he, but he was, you know, he was trying to pull people up with him. And he wasn't even to where he was about to be. He just was trying to, he was trying to get, I mean, he was on his, he was well on his way. Um, it's just tragic. 20 years old, rest in peace, God bless Pop Smoke. Look, my mom made it. My mom made it, we made it. My mom made it. Thank God that I made it. My mom made it, we made it. Look, my mom made it. Look, I remember the day. Same bitch for a week straight I used to eat 50 cent cake Now it's Philippe's It's Philippe's for the steak And hella dust 
Back here at the arena of the Southwell Complex, the Columbia Cougars set to host the Central Methodist Eagles. Cougars again, three and two, the Eagles two and one, and it's time for the shelter insurance. Starting lineups, we'll start with the visitors tonight. Central Methodist playing in the guard position will be Josh Knowlton. Knowlton is a 6'3 junior out of Canada, went to Hill Community College. Again, that's Josh Knowlton. Everett Stubblefield will start in another guard spot. A 5'11 sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois, went to land the Lakeland Community College before attending Central Methodist University. James Jordan will start at the third guard spot. Jordan is 6'6 and a grad student at 185 pounds out of Detroit, Michigan. Isaiah May will start at a forward position. 190 pound junior out of Belleville, Illinois, standing 6'5". He too is a transfer from Lakeland Community College. And Thomas Sawulu will start in the post. 6'8", a sophomore out of London, England. And the head coach of the Central Methodist Eagles is Matt Sherman in his first year. He takes over for his father, who is at the helm forever <laughs> yeah. over in Fayette. Certainly look like it, uh, Central Methodist with, with Sherman taking over. And, you know, Sherman's, you know, Matt Sherman. He's uh, been a kind of a well-traveled guy himself after playing at Central Methodist. Went and had a couple of separate stops at Graceland and a stop at uh, William Jewell before going and, and being the assistant for the past seven years and now takes over for, for Pops on the sideline. Shelter insurance starting lineup for the Columbia Cougars. Starting for the Cougars at a guard will be their point guard, 6'3 sophomore Trendon Tisdale from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Jinx High School. Starting at another guard position is the former conference player of the year in the AMC, Tony Burks. St. Louis, Missouri is his hometown. Went to St. Mary High School. Transfer from Wabash Valley Community College. He's 6'2", a senior. Marlon Allen will get his first start for Coach Thomas Brock. Allen is a 6'5 junior out of Orlando, Florida. Went to Boone High School and a transfer from Hillsborough Community College. Playing in the middle will be Colin and Carson Parkers. Montgomery City, Missouri is their hometown. Colin Parker, 6'7", a sophomore. Carson Parker, 6'8", a sophomore. Head coach of the Cougars, Thomas Brock in his fourth season. Coach Brock, 61 and 33. That's the Shelter Insurance starting lineups for this matchup between the Cougars and Eagles. Columbia has won 33 meetings, Central Methodist 18. Tonight's uh, officials are Kelly Groom, Nate Gamut, and Chris Stevens. Today's officials are brought to you by Lee's Tire Company. You may not like every call tonight, but you'll love your one call to Lee's Tire Company for all of your automotive needs. The official car care specialist of Cougar Athletics. Tip in the air and the tip control by the Cougars as Tisdale brings it into the front court, works to the right side. Man-to-man -man defense by Central Methodist. Bounce pass down low to Colin Parker. Out top to Burks. Tony Burks works to the right side to Allen. Allen back to Colin Parker to Tisdale. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bounce pass down low. Parker, Colin Parker shot no good. And the rebound cleared out of there by Sawulu. Central Methodist pushes it up the floor. Stubblefield works to the left side, hands it off to Jordan. Jordan out to Noten. Noten to the left elbow, tied up there by Allen. He'll kick it back out to May. May to the right side, moving Jordan. George Runner, no good. Carson Parker with a rebound. No score after a minute. Into the front court, Burks. Burks to Colin Parker. Baseline, Allen, shot on the way from 10, good. Great ball movement there by the Cougars, getting down the floor, being able to, to get into transition quickly with Burks, and a uh, nice finish there by Allen on the baseline. With it ahead of the key is Noten. Noten works to the right side, gives the stubble field. Three-point shot, no good. Carson Parker with another board. It's going to be big when you're facing a guy like uh, like James Jordan, 6'6", like you mentioned, Texan, a great player, averaging 26 points a game. Going to be big for uh, for the Cougars here tonight. Burks with an entry pass down low. Carson Parker, hook shot on the way. No good. Could have been basket interference. Easily could have been. Didn't get called. And regardless, Columbia got to get back defensively. And quickly, a basket by Central Meth. Yeah, Noten with the runner on the left side with the left hand. 
2-2 the score. Back the other way comes Columbia. Left side, Tisdale. Tisdale circles around the top. Bounce pass, Colin Parker. Spins to his right, high off the glass and in. Great action there by Parker on the baseline. Was able to get set by a screen on the block and was able to transition to the, on the opposite side. Good easy basket there from Columbia, good work. Down the left side, Jordan. Jordan's runner is good. We went no score for a minute. Now we're trading baskets here in the next one. So both teams trying to get the offense flowing a little bit faster and a little bit smoother. Finding the rhythm. Tisdale circles to the top. Right side, Burks. Tony dishes it out. Carson Parker can't get it to go. They battle for the board. Rebound, noted. They work it to the left side. Three-point shot in flight in a bucket. As Stubblefield drained a long three. You know, he's a good shooter, 43% from the three-point arc. No doubt about it. Stubblefield, a big-time shooter, like you said, 33%. Second leading scorer at 16.7 uh, points per game coming in. And got to know where, where number three is at all times. Top the key to Burks. Tony with it beyond the arc. Colin Parker entry pass to Carson back to Burks for a three to answer, and he does. That's how you answer, just like that. Great ball movement, the inside-out game going to be there for Columbia as long as they continue that quick ball movement just like they had the last couple of possessions. On the left side, Jordan. Jordan chased by Burks. Now whistle away from the ball. Battle underneath Carson Parker. Tied up with a big guy, Sawulu. Carson Parker picks up the foul. First foul on the Cougars, first foul either way. Uh, obviously, little little hand check away from the ball. Jockeying for position, down in the paint. Circle around on the left side, Stubblefield. Being chased by Tisdale. Left side, noted. Long three over to the fender, good. Man. Josh Nolan, yeah. <laughs> That's his first three of the year. He was 0-12 before he launched that. Man, tough shot. What a way to get your first one of the year. But, boy, what a tough shot. Uh, not really fading away, but, boy, he, he certainly looked like it. Tisdale kicks it to Colin Dancer. That one won't go. Rebound note. Both these teams like to play in transition. There's Noten taking it right to the rim. He's going to get a foul called. And they'll send him to the line to shoot two. Well, you got to move those feet. Mm. Called for the foul for Columbia is Marlon Allen, the JUCO transfer from Hillsborough Community College, getting his first start. Second team foul on Columbia until the line goes no to. Shooting 67% from the line on the air. This one's good. Into the ball game for Central Methodist. Going to see Quentin Reeves as well as number 25, Dole Majic. And for Columbia, Dodokara gets to see his first action of the game. Tex free throw is also good from Norton. Washer checks in along with Dakara. Along with Davis. I've been impressed with Brock Davis here in the early going. Yeah, he's played really well. He's uh, kind of one of those energy type guys. Gets the gets the defense going right there. He's going to go with the offensive side of things. Burks with the assist. Brock Davis on the assist from Burks. Good work. Great ball movement yet again. Cougars trail by three. They've been down by as many as five. Step back, three-point shot, good. Knocking that one down is James Jordan. One thing that we haven't uh, really hit on too much, both teams are shooting the ball extremely well right now. 71% for Central Methodist, 50% for the Cougars here so far. Both teams uh, really putting it up at a high clip. Colin Parker kicks it out to Cara. Davis, three-pointer, won't go. Washer with a rebound, feeds Colin Parker. And he draws the foul. How about a big man rebound there from Bo Washer, huh? Underneath and able to able to get a hand up, go up for that ball and, and haul it down. And now he sends his teammate to the line because of it. Quinnen Reeves called for the foul, his first out of Southern Wesleyan, Wesleyan University. Colin Parker's free throw, good. 
Collins has been struggling at the line, and that's been one of the downfalls of this Cougar team here early in the year. They've struggled at the strike. Yeah, Collin himself 11-17 going into today, and really only uh, shooting 62% from the stripe entering. Like you said, a little bit of a struggle here early going, but he gets in on both of those. Full court pressure now applied by Columbia. Cougars trail by four. On the right side, noted. Out top. Reeves. Step back. Baseline jumper, good by Note. And boy, Note is smooth as silk. You know, Tex, one thing I've noticed too is these guys put up some tough shots and they're finding a way to get them to fall. That's uh, tough to beat when they're when they're putting up some big shots like that. 17-11, Eagles lead. A lot of floating shots. Yes. Washer drives down the left side, hands it to Davis, a little out of control. Luckily, it trickles out to Burks. Burks splits a double team. Back to Davis. Defense overplays. Davis with a reverse. Good movement Layout. again, man. That ball movement yet again, but Davis with the finish. Uh, that, that energy guy is showing why, and he's playing tough here in the minutes he's getting. Six and a half minutes gone here in the first half. On the left side, Jordan. Jordan penetrates, shot blocked by Davis. Well, you call the text, uh, <laughs> get Brock Davis into the game. He's played really well this season, and now he's playing even better here right now since entering into this one. Good start from him in the minutes he's getting right now. Davis, a 6'6 freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's still trying to figure it out. Wait till he gets up a full head of steam. What a move there, though, by Noten. Got to shut that baseline off. No. Call, called for the foul is Bo Washer, his first. Noten today, 11 points already in seven minutes. Uh, he's not missed a shot, and he's found a way to, to do it again. He's going to go to the free throw line for his third attempt of the day. His team leading 19-13. Missed the free throw, Davis with the board. First miss of any kind from Noten today. Duke and Cara gets it up the floor. Davis with it out on a perimeter, or rather Allen on the perimeter. Allen with a left hand off the glass, no. Davis kept it alive. Washer there, his put back won't go, but a foul. Columbia is getting those boards, especially on the offensive side, able to, to get a, a lot of good things working offensively, Move me, moving the basketball, but I think the biggest thing is where it's coming from is these offensive rebounds that, uh, that Columbia is getting right now. Father Tolton grad, Washer clangs the free throw. He's a pretty good free throw shooter over the years, shooting about 85%. Clangs both of them. And that has been a bugaboo here in the early going for this Cougar team. You recognize the missed free throws late in the game, but they hurt early, too. Yes. Kind of set a precedence. Especially leaving the extra points when you're when you're needing a few extra here or there, uh, like you mentioned, late in the game. But, boy, they, they come to show on the box score, no doubt about it. Long three-point shot to beat the shot clock, and it's nothing but net as Quinn Rives knocks it down. How about it? Another three, another contested shot by Columbia, and just no, no doubter there from Central Methodist yet again. Getting some tough shots up nine. This shot a little short. For Marlon Allen, but he was fouled. That'll go on Reeves. Senior out of Kansas City. Be his second, team's third. 12-17 to go here in the opening half. Allen to the line. He has fought it at the stripe. This free throw in the way is good. You know, when you brag on them and they're hitting 90, 90% of them, they always miss when you start bragging on them. So when he's struggling, <laughs> maybe they'll reverse psychology. There we go. He, I like that. He's been struggling at the line. Maybe he'll go 10-10 to 10 tonight. I like that. 
72% from the floor by Central Methodist here so far. That's unheard of. Unbelievable. Next free throw is good from Allen. Yeah, considering he came in shooting 50% from the floor, which still isn't bad. Right. And a bad pass going out of bounds by McGrew. Jaden McGrew is a 6'3", 195-pounder out of Garland, Texas. Transfer from Dodge City Community College. Stubble field back in for Central Methodist and Tommy Hafer in for the Cougars. You know, Hafer had a big game on Saturday up in Canton, 11 points. He was a guy that could put the ball in a bucket against Iowa Wesleyan in that tough loss. Right side, Burks. Hafer, Tisdale with it on top. Looking for a screen. Beat his man to the rack, left hand good. And we got a flop warning gonna be called underneath as well. So, flop. And it's uh, automatic it's on free throw now. On, on stubble field. So the Cougars will get a f extra free throw here. And it'll be Burks to take the shot. That's the first time we've seen that call this year. Yeah. And uh, they, they waste no time anymore. They're giving you free throws with it. Couldn't cash in, and Central Methodist will retain possession here, though. Five-point ball game. Full court pressure. A little zone action. And a big guy strong on the rack. So Wulu with a bucket as he flushed it. Good ball movement. Didn't put the ball on the ground one time other than a bounce pass. So great ball movement there from, uh, from Central Methodist to break that press. Burks goes right to the rack, couldn't finish, leaves it just short. Rebound off the board going the other way by Noten. Jordan and around the perimeter, they work it out top to Noten. Noten pulls up, might have been deflected, and then Carson Parker had it and dropped it out of bounds. Noten's first miss, like you mentioned, a little bit of a deflection, but boy, uh, Noten's first miss of the day from, uh, from the floor. And again, a contested, awkward shot yet again, but uh, was somehow still able to get it close. Jordan triggers it in. Somehow that pass gets out to Isaiah May, and now offensive foul. And picking up the foul is Sawulu, his first. 6'8", 245, that's a lot of man down there. Mm. He's a tough guy to move, no doubt about it, and they really try to work him around the paint quite a bit. You don't see him get out top like he is right now. That's the one challenge of guarding the Parkers is you've got to go out and guard up top. Tisdale with a jumper at the line. He's got four. 24-19. Just exactly what we expected. A couple of heavyweights exchanging punches here. Physical ball game, no doubt about it here early on. Seeing two teams uh, two teams trade punches one way or another here. On the right side, stubble field, the runner no good. Rebound Tisdale and he's tripped up from behind. Well, it's just like an AMC game. Yeah, seeing everything bodies hit contested. the floor. Yeah, seeing bodies hit the floor. And like you said, everything contested, no doubt about it. It's great work here in this one uh, for Columbia to, to stay with it, too. That's the, the big thing. Good early challenge for him. Left side, Hafer. Still a man played by Central Methodist. Tisdale driving baseline. Denied. Hafer's pass deflected and stolen. Racing the other way and laying it up and in is Morris. Morris with a great steal, took, takes it the other way and had a nice uh, nice little Euro step around the man. Put it in for two and 26-19 here, under 10 to play. Seven point lead for Central Methodist, their biggest. Carson Parker draws a double team, flipped it over to Allen, he couldn't hang on. Turnover Cougars.
Right side, long three from the left-hander. It's good from Morris. Timeout, Columbia here. Talk things over, full timeout. 29-19, 10 point ball game. We'll be back with more in a moment. Economy Towing of Columbia has been proudly serving the Columbia, Mid-Missouri area for over 20 years with all of your towing and roadside service needs. When you need a tow truck, remember Economy Towing is ready for you. Just give us a call at 573-474-6630. So, you've had a car accident. Now what? Just bring it to us. And maybe you're waiting with a banged up car and an insurance check. No need to wait, just bring it to us. They work on all makes and models and handle every detail with your insurance company. You don't need to do a thing. University Subaru Body Shop. When accidents happen, we handle it all. You don't do a thing, just bring it to us. We can't handle all your problems, but we sure can not handle your car problems. Economy Towing of Columbia has been proudly serving the Columbia, Mid-Missouri area for over 20 years with all of your towing and roadside service needs. When you need a tow truck, remember Economy Towing is ready for you. Just give us a call at 573-474-6630. 29-19, Cougars down 10 here with 9-19 to play in the first half. As Columbia trying to match baskets with Central Methodist. And boy, the Eagles right now shooting 69% from the floor. Columbia shooting 50%, still down 10. The Eagles haven't missed a three. Five of five, Damon. Yeah, I think that's a big stat right there is the five for five from three. And uh, I would say out of those five shots, four, if not all five, have been contested by Columbia. So there's not a whole lot that they're doing wrong defensively. It's just tough shots going in for Central Methodist. Cougars and Old Whites will bring it up the floor. As Tisdale out there with Colin Parker. Cole Durkin on the floor for the first time. Carson Parker with the ball on the point. Tisdale, Tommy Hafer also making up the five. Wide open underneath Carson Parker and he lays it in. Yeah, you saw Suulu get a little bit, uh, a little bit greedy there, trying to go over and double team, and that uh, that double team didn't work. Morris playing catch out front with Jordan. Three-point shot, no good. Rebound stuck back up and in by Sawulu. Tipped off of uh, Carson Parker, excuse me, Colin Parker, and into the hands there of Sawulu, and he was able to put it back. But Columbia playing really tough out top. They know they got to guard the perimeter a little bit better, and they're doing a good job of it. Now they got to find a way to stop inside. Colin Parker with the right hand, no good. Sawulu with a rebound. On the left side, Jordan. Right sideline. Columbia playing zone now. Long three, no good. Nice play by Hafer to keep it from going out of bounds to save the possession. 10 point game under eight here in the first half. Tisdale left side. Colin Parker on the baseline, back out to Tisdale. Central Methodist sagging in this man. Down low, Carson Parker. Back to Tisdale. Tisdale works right. Tied up, kicks it out, Hafer for a three. No. Had to launch it, but Cole Gherkin with a rebound. Fresh 20 for Columbia. They've had and, great movement. Yeah, text. entry pass denied and race the other way. And with the layup on the finger roll is James Jordan. He's got nine. I was just about to say, they've had great ball movement. But, boy, when, when you get to passing it like that back and forth, some bad things are bound to happen. And, unfortunately, a quick turnover like that. Tisdale with it out top. Works to the right side to Gherkin. Gherkin down low, Carson Parker. Back it in against the Lulu. And they're going to call a foul on the big guy as Thomas Sawulu called for the push. This is a big man like we were talking about earlier on. It's a big guy to, to move. He's going to check out here with two fouls. Six team fouls, so nice thing for Columbia. They're going to be shooting. And that's, uh, 
that's big, especially with 6.50 left here in this first half. Kara triggers. Gherkin. Gherkin's floater off the baseline. Good. This is a guy they got to get going a little bit. Yeah. Cole Gherkin has been struggling. Yeah, if they can get Gherkin going, gives them just another option. I think that's the other thing we haven't talked a whole lot about is how deep Columbia can be. They go really eight guys, but can even go five further that have uh, really played significant key minutes. And with the addition of Allen here, it's even better. Working on the baseline, Anthony's just checked in. He's out of Jeff City, went to Elias High School. That shot's rejected. Blocking that shots, Davis. Here come the Cougars on the run out. Left side, Washer into the paint. Washer feeds Gurkut. Now to the left block. Can't get the shot off. And Davis couldn't finish the shot, had an opportunity, couldn't finish, quick shot the other way. Offensive rebound, and Columbia's going to fight for it. Parker comes away. Into the front court, Kara. Kara drives to the top, gives the ball to Colin Parker, to Gherkin, and a foul away from the ball. Called for the person, oh, is... Majic. Burks and Allen back in for Columbia. Colin Parker and Gherkin gonna check out and that'll send uh, sending Brock Davis to the line to shoot the one and one here. Front end with 5.39 to go. Davis's first trip to the stripe. Free throwing away is good. And he's got five here in the early going, trying to get the Cougars Back to within striking distance, trailing by nine. Free throw pending, on the way. Clanged it. No good rebound, Stubblefield. Cara putting the pressure on Stubblefield there. Couldn't do anything with it. Quickly taking it to the rack is Isaiah May. No miss out of bounds. Columbia will take possession back. 33-24. Cougars down nine, five and a half to play. Time to put together a bit of a run. I think it's got to start on the defensive end. Yeah. Cara works to the right side. Burks has been pretty quiet here in the first half out to Cara. Cara catches an illegal screen as it was moving. Yeah. Looked like a fullback on the lead block. You mentioned the text, the fact that Tony Burks being a little bit quiet, only three points in 11 minutes and only one assist. He's only taken two total shots here in this one. Get Burks going. He's traditionally been, been a guy that if, if he can get going, especially in that second half, is going to be big for Columbia. But, boy, they need him right now and uh, doing, doing something, especially in that offensive side. May on the move, down the lane, puts it up over to the defender. It's no good. Rebound fought for and clearing it out of there. For the Cougars. And moving the other way, Davis. Tip by Davis, no good. And back comes the Eagles. Noten with it on the left side from 25. Short. Safe from going out of bounds and playing four on five Central Methodist and Saving that ball, going out of bounds is Isaiah May, and he went through the door and busted the glass, but it looks like May's okay. Yeah, May went, uh, he went for a little bit of a trip out to range line for a second there. And boy, bust the glass on the door. Watched a lot of games in here. I've mm. never seen that happen. That, uh, that That's interesting, to say the least. I've not seen that. Foul on the other end, and to the stripe goes Burks. Who is 0-1 from the free throw line. This one on the way is good. Burks with four. 33-25, 436 to go. Burks looking to cash in on the second one here. He got them both. And he's like a ticking bomb. I mean, sooner or later, he'll go off. Hopefully in a big way. Columbia looking to take advantage here. Big stop. They've gone back to man here on the defensive side. Double field on the left side to Jordan. Jordan penetrating baseline, no good. Rebound pulled down by Davis. Another big stop now to Burks. Far three off the wing, got it. There it is. It's what we've been calling for, what we've been looking for. 
Burks gets down in transition and takes care of business. Big shot from him. Four point ball game. With it on the left side, Jordan. Jordan gets it out top to Noten. Noten to Stubblefield in the corner. They work around the perimeter of this man defense. On the spin is Jordan. Left side, Noten. Tied up, off balance, shot no good. Rebound Burks, here come the Cougars. Five on two, Burks kicks it in the corner. Allen, Cara, Cara with it, back out to Burks. He'll slow the tempo down, 20 on the shot clock. Three and a half to play here before the break. Burks will fire another three, that's an air ball. Washer saves it from going out of bounds, but nobody home. We'll see Tisdale back in, we'll see Gherkin back in, but boy, what a uh, what a little bit of a run there by Columbia when they needed it most. Uh, get the get the momentum. Timeout's gonna be taken here by Central Methodist with 324 to go before the break. Four point ball game. Central Methodist wants the timeout, we'll keep it right here. 33 to 29. Saturday, November the 19th, the 16th ranked Cougar Volleyball team will host 22nd ranked Ottawa University in the NAIA opening round. The first serve is scheduled for one o'clock. A Cougar victory will advance them to the final site in Sioux City, Iowa. And that club has done nothing but get better all year long. And they're looking for a big send off on Saturday. You know, Tex, we've seen them both uh, play quite a bit. And uh, boy, what a what a run that they went on there in the middle of the year. And guess who it started with when they won that 15 straight? Ottawa. It started with Ottawa. So uh, getting that opportunity, see if they can take advantage of it. A little bit of a disappointment. They couldn't finish out the conference tournament Saturday, falling to Missouri Baptist in a tough one, three to one. The Eagles run a little weave out top. Long three on the way from Jordan, no good, and another stop as Burks brings it the other way. Three minutes and 48 seconds scoring drought, now up to four minutes for the scoring drought for Central Methodist here. Good defense after that switch to man. What a move by Davis, but he couldn't finish. Got his own rebound and finishes. There's that energy we were talking about. Brock Davis, that guy, brings the energy both sides of the floor. He's had a block, he's had a great night offensively so far, up to seven taking care of business and now down to two point ball game here right before the break. Cougars dig in on the man. Top to key, James Jordan. Left side, noted, noted penetrates and hits the floater over Tony Burks. Tough shot, got it to go. Um, I got not a whole lot more you can say. Noten's done that all game long. It's tough shot after tough shot. That guy comes in averaging four points game. Granted it's four, three games in, but golly, he's lit it up here tonight. 13 already. Gherkin cuts through the paint. Out to Tisdale for a three. Yes. How about that? Trend in one Tisdale. One point game. Cuts it to one with 2.05 to go and his seventh point. Columbia spreading around the, uh, the offensive production tonight too. Jordan spins and the floater's good. Yeah. He's in double figures already. Well, right at nine. Gherkin right side. Davis, Tisdale. Davis thought about the three, penetrates as it raked away, got it back, kicks it out. Allen's three, no good. And what an effort from Josh Noten to pull down that rebound. We're seeing a great, uh a lot of hustle plays, great hustle plays both sides here. Um, maybe not necessarily the shooting mark we were seeing early on, but now we're starting to see those defenses show up a little bit. Stubblefield beat his man. That's a big basket for Central. Now they're back up five. One minute to go here before the break, up five. See what Columbia puts together here on this offensive possession. Tisdale works to the right, pulls up. That's a three, it won't go. Rebound, noted. Back comes Central. Jordan with it, right side. Picked up by Allen. Jordan with a fader out of the corner, no good. Rebound, Gherkin. Differential, about seven seconds. Shot clock, game clock, Cougars turn it over. Racing the other way, and 
Norton's shot is blocked, but Burks called for the foul. Boy, that was a careless turnover out top. Yeah, bad turnover and leads to a bad foul at the other end. Obviously, it stops the basket, thankfully, but uh, and, and having them to earn it from the stripe, which they've only been there three times tonight. Noten uh, has had all the free throws for Central Methodist in the first half, and he'll hit the front end. Be the first team to 40 tonight, 40 to 34. 29 seconds to go. Gherkin will check out here in the final half minute. Charlie Bronikowski checks in out of Boonville. Former Boonville Pirate. He's a big man, 6'6", 225. Full free throws drained by Noten. Noten with 14. Tisdale across the stripe, works to the right. Getting some pressure from Jordan. Trying to get inside to Parker. They do with 10 on the clock. Kyle and Parker along the baseline, out to Burks. Shot clock, dark. Burks from the left point for three. No, Colin Parker with a rebound and a putback at the buzzer. And it is halftime. 41-36, Cougars within five. And Central Methodist has the lead. 41-36, our halftime score. We'll be back in a moment with a Hawthorne Bank halftime show. This is Cougar basketball. Why wait? Pre-Black Friday savings are on now at the Shinin Family Furniture. Invest in your quality of life with great deals throughout our store. Like this buy one, get one recliner for only $6.99. Or this 12-inch queen hybrid mattress for only $5.99. Our sales floor is stocked and ready for you. So if you see it in our store, you can take it home today. The Pre-Black Friday sale. Going on now at the Shinin Family Furniture in Loose Creek and for sales. Are you looking for an exciting career? If so, then we're looking for you. Hitachi Energy is hiring full-time hourly team members at our Jeff City location with an average starting rate of $21 to $25 per hour. Full-time hires are eligible for benefits starting day one. An exciting career is waiting for you, so don't wait. Apply online today at hitachienergy.com career. From tonneau covers and running boards to hitches and undercoating, Linex of Mid-Missouri is more than just the number one bedliner company in the world. We've got your truck covered from top to bottom. We install names like B&W, WeatherTech, and Ranch Hand. We're not only the best at bedliners, we also use the best in truck accessories there is. Stop by today to see how we can make your truck work for you. Looking for a great deal on tires? Popeye's Tires and Garage in Columbia, where you can get the best prices in town on tires. Whether you want a used tire with lots of miles left on them or new tires at unbeatable price, we have them. My dad also offers the best price on oil changes and other repairs to keep you safe on the road. Popeye's Tires and Garage, just off Paris Road in Columbia. Come, Come see, see us, us for a great deal on tires and repairs. Welcome back to the Arena of the Southwell Complex here in Columbia for the Hawthorne Bank Halftime Show. Here at the intermission, the Cougars trail the Eagles 41 to 36. And Damon, a very entertaining first half. A lot of athleticism displayed on the court. Yeah, no doubt about it. We've seen a lot of, lot of uh, like I said, a lot of athleticism. We've seen a lot of shots being taken here. Uh, 33 from Central Methodist, 30 from Columbia. Not near as as high of scoring as what it looked like there early on. We're we're seeing that uh, those percentages up up through the roof. But boy, seeing a lot of bodies hit the floor, a lot of second chance points, a lot of points in the paint, and uh, like you said, a lot of athleticism, no doubt about that. Central Methodist led by as many as 12 in the first half. The Cougars had a two nothing lead very early, but they have been trying to run down these Eagles, and uh, the shooting in the first. Seven, eight minutes of this game by Central Methodist. You mentioned it, so many off-balance shots that would fall, and that's really the lead that Columbia is trying to erase. Yeah, I mean, that that's 
plain and simple, when you saw those shots no longer fall is when Columbia was able to close that gap. They went on a four-minute scoring drought at Central Methodist, uh, so it, it really closed the gap down. Columbia was able to cut it to one, and, and then they put together a few baskets, getting to the paint, hit a couple of off-balance shots as well. That's uh, another key thing, but, boy, um, Foul trouble is going to be interesting as well. I know it's not something that we've really talked a whole lot about, but when you got a big guy in Thomas Wulu with two fouls already, um, that, that's another thing to keep an eye on into this second half. Especially in a physical game like the mm -hmm. NAIA game that we see day in and day out. Looking at some numbers, Central Methodist in the first half shot 80, or rather 49%, 16 to 33 from the floor. Five and nine from the arc for 56%. Four or five from the free throw line for 80%. Meanwhile, Columbia not that far behind. Cougars shot 43% from the floor, 13 of 30. Three of 10 from the arc for 30%. Columbia seven of 11 from the charity stripe, 64%. Cougars did out rebound Central Methodist, 20 to 17. And Columbia had six offensive rebounds, Central Methodist with four. Central Methodist turned it over just two times. Columbia with five turnovers, six assists for the Cougars, four assists for the Eagles. And you look at those turnovers in a game like this, and even five, that's a low number. And you, you got to like that as a coach. Yeah, you, you certainly that you do. take care of the ball. Yeah, and, and really it, it was five, and one was a really careless one right here before the break. So, um, you know, it was just a mental mishap on that on that turnover. So, Columbia playing really clean basketball. It's uh, what, what I think we're seeing a lot of is is made and missed shots, and then we're just transitioning up and down the floor at a, at a fast pace and trying to trying to get some points out of transition. Both teams are are getting up and down the floor pretty nicely. Josh Newton, or rather Noten, with 15 first-half points, five rebounds and assist, nine points for James Jordan, five points and a rebound for Stubblefield, four points, four boards for Thomas Sawulu, and five points and a rebound for Morris, three points for Rives to round out the scoring of the Eagles. The Cougars with some balanced scoring as well. Eight points for Tony Burks, very quiet in the first 10 minutes. Had a couple rebounds and an assist. Seven points, five boards for Brock Davis. Seven points and a rebound for Trenton Tisdale. Tony Burks, as I mentioned, with eight. Six points, two boards for Colin Parker. Carson Parker with two rebounds, two, two points. Marlon Allen in his first start, four points and a rebound. And two points and three boards for Cole Gherkin. Uh, really, when you look at the numbers, pretty even, as is the score with a five-point differential. Yeah, and, you know, one thing I wanted to bring up, too, and, and mention to you, the fact that the balanced scoring, you mentioned that Columbia's got a balanced scoring, eight, seven, seven, six. And when you think about it, they haven't really gotten Burks going extremely well. Allen has put a couple on. Davis is, is starting to pick up a little bit of fire. That's going to make them a tough guard here in the second half because of that ability to, to just go to multiple guys. Damon Helgevold is not only an analyst, but he's a, he is a bully coach here at Columbia College. And Damon, talk a little bit about your season. You got a couple of uh, big matches already under your belt. Yeah, we did. Uh, a couple of good Good uh, tournaments to start the year. We uh, went to uh, St. Charles, Missouri for the Lindenwood Open to start things off and uh, finished third place there as a team and had the individual champion, Jordan Chirp, won the uh, individual side there uh, for us. And uh, then we ended up going to Hastings, Nebraska two weeks ago and finished second as a team there. And Jordan also won that, that individual title. So... Um, boy, I couldn't be couldn't be happier with the way we are able to perform so far through two two tournaments and getting excited because we go to go back to St. Charles this weekend for a tournament that uh, I feel really really strongly about for us. You guys are really just getting started, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we are. We're uh, I think today was practice 27. We're two tournaments in, and um, we've still got we got two tournaments this before the uh, semester's over. We have the Vegas trip right before Christmas, and then we've got four tournaments in the second semester and postseason. So it's uh, very similar to the, the basketball schedule, just not near as grueling, not near as many times out, but uh, 
you know, it's it's still as long. We're still practicing hard and, and going through that entire second semester, but um, uh, it, it's certainly a lot of fun. And, and this group of, of girls we got, just a, a great group to work with, fun energy to have every day at, at practice and, and to travel with, and, and it makes uh, it makes the job a lot easier when, when you get a group like that. Talk about the trip to Las Vegas. That's quite a trip. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's a trip that I went on when I was in college myself, bowling, and uh, it's it's kind of fun because you don't have to worry about classes. You don't have to worry about you know finals coming up or or tests or anything like that, homework. And so what it's becoming is, is kind of a vacation before the vacation, and so gives them the opportunity to to go out. We're still able to go have some fun, be a part of uh, of a great tournament, and uh, get some get some work in on the bowling side but also just to have a little bit of a fun and it's a fun tournament talk just a little bit about women's bowling on the collegiate level uh, how many members use it on the squad how many of them are scoring for you yeah so we roster eight a weekend is is what a team is allowed to roster and then uh, we we score five at a time and we do generally most tournaments i should say we go and and we have our five bowl their own individual game at, at a time and then the, the next day we come back where everybody is bowling one game so certainly uh, certainly a lot of fun with this group and and you know it's uh, it's really cool because women's bowling and bowling in general is just continuing to grow as an intercollegiate sport coach damon helgevold uh, bowling Coach here at Columbia College, the Columbia men's basketball team trailing 41-36 at the break. We'll be back with more of a Hawthorne Bank Halftime Show in a moment. Now through December 31st, Jim Butler Auto Group is donating $50 to the Food Bank for Central and Northeast Missouri for every vehicle sold. Help us raise $100,000 to feed Missouri families when you buy at Jim Butler because giving back is always in good taste. Every year, car manufacturers add more safety devices to protect you. And to protect me. Most of those cameras work through the windshield. At Mark's Mobile Glass, we've invested in equipment to recalibrate those safety systems after the windshield's replaced. A lot of companies don't offer recalibration. They might even tell you you don't need it. You may not need all of your lug nuts either. But we wouldn't recommend it. Our family at Mark's Mobile Glass always put your safety first. Mark's Mobile Glass is always learning, investing, and protecting. What matters most? Keeping your family safe is everything. That's why it's so important to bring your car to the right place. Because it all starts with the right diagnosis. Cars are really complicated today. That's why we have the most state-of-the-art diagnostic tools available. And the state-of-art guys that know how to use it. Right, Meredith? Right, Danny. Don't leave safety to chance. And get it fixed right the first time. Right, Meredith? Yes, Danny. University Subaru, just bring it to us. To turn your dream home into reality, Premier Construction and Remodeling is the expert in kitchens, bathrooms, painting, and concrete. From complete remodels to new roofs and decks, we specialize in anything home improvement. You can trust Premier Construction and Remodeling to provide a well-crafted result you'll love and build an everlasting relationship in the process. If your home needs an upgrade, call Premier Construction and Remodeling at 573-801-4422 today. Get the most out of your ABC 17 StormTrack weather app. Scan the code on your screen now to check out videos on how to get app pushes and sign up for weather alerts wherever you want. When severe weather rolls in, you'll be the first to know. Always tracking, always alerting. That's ABC 17 StormTrack weather. Here at the half, Columbia trailing Central Methodist University 41 to 36. Both men and women's soccer teams are in the NAIA National Tournament as uh, the 11th ranked women are in Hattiesburg, Mississippi for opening round action on Thursday. And that's a five o'clock kickoff. Meanwhile, starting an hour earlier, it will be the men's team, which ranked 15th in the country as they uh, are in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And uh, they will start at four o'clock. That's four o'clock central time against Indiana Wesleyan University. As we wish them the best of luck as uh, they try to continue to advance and keep their seasons alive. Don't forget, we've got NAIA volleyball action here at the Cougar Dome on Saturday, a 1 o'clock first serve with Ottawa and Columbia. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. It's been a... 
Don't get left out in the cold. Now at Creative Audio, remote start systems are buy one and get a $100 gift card or WeatherTech floor mats. Beat the rush. Get the best deal on the number one holiday gift this year. Two gifts for one on the Road Water Trailer Home. Shop online for gift cards and the best holiday gifts at creativeaudio.net where we can ship to your door or pick up in store and get it installed today at any of our seven locations. Hey, yo, Creative Audio. At Popo's, we love our customers, and it looks like the feeling is mutual. Our family loves Popo's pizza. And we love the cookies, too. Their cheesy garlic bread is the best. The best pizza in Missouri, Popo's. Popo's! I can't beat the atmosphere, can't beat the wings, the salad, everything is great. The best cookies anywhere. It's the best place to hang out with friends. Popo's is the best! Because it's our favorite pizza place. Popo's, come in and find out why people say we're the best. Winstone Entertainment Event Center is a one-of-a-kind venue featuring brands and quality fun right in your own backyard. Every Thursday night, twist and shout as Hambo Latham plays the hits from the 40s to the 80s. When Hambo gets to picking, the dance floor gets a kick in. Plus, enjoy great drink specials and a delicious buffet from the Winstone Kitchen. Winstone Entertainment Event Center is the place to be every Thursday night. Has your child hit a roadblock in school or gotten stuck while the rest of the class moves on? At Sylvan, our students learn up to three times faster than with just school alone. We'll help your child catch up, keep up, and get ahead. Visit sylvanlearning.com to get started. Forty-one thirty-six, Columbia trailing Central Methodist as we get set for the second half. Hey, Damon, what do you see here for the Cougars? What's going to be the magic uh, solution? What do they have to do to turn this thing around? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you got to continue to stick on the man side of things defensively, be able to be able to force them into tough shots. They're not going to be able to hit every tough shot in the book like they did in the first half. Uh, so force them into tough shots. I think offensively, it's it's fine. Tony Burks, get him going, get him into a groove, and once he gets going, everybody else will. Stubblefield with a runner, and the Eagles are off and soaring. Stubblefield with seven, and the Eagles push their lead, 43-36. Man-to-man defense by the Eagles. Tisdale sets it up left side. Out top to Allen, catches the screen from Davis, who started the second half. Now Davis with it in the paint. Nice move to his left, right-hand shot. No good. Burks there to finish it. How about that? Great uh, great transition, great Floating through the lane there by Burks. Able to come through for the tip in and uh, might as well cash in an and one while he's at it too. Great work. Thought an interesting move by Thomas Brock as he comes back with Brock Davis to start the second half. Yeah, very, uh, I, I think, you know, you go with Brock Davis for an energy thing, man. You, you get him on the floor and if he gets going, he's that energy kind of guy and has that, that ability to really get the energy started for this team. Three-point play in the book, 43-39, four-point ball game. Working to the right, Stubblefield pulls up. Noted. Now on the move, May. May tied up by Colin Parker, back to Noted. Noted from the elbow, got it. Boy, fading away, and he is on fire. Just can't be stopped on those fadeaways. He's hit a couple of them from three, and now he's Hit, uh, hit more and more from, from basically the elbow in the free throw area. Avila held him scoreless the other <laughs> night. How did they do that? <laughs> no kidding. Burks drives and slithers through the lane. Shot up no good. Didn't get a foul called. And the rebound cleared down by Isaiah May. Yeah. The right side note. Physical nature of this game. I, I don't think Burks going to get that call. We didn't see it in the first half. Hopefully he can draw a little more body and maybe get it next time. And then as I say that, we get uh, a little bit of a kind of a trip, but not necessarily a lot of body, and that's going to be a foul away from the ball. Allen called for the foul. It'll be his second personal first foul of the second half. Just getting things going here, about a minute and a half in. It's double field, right side. Plays catch with May, now catches a screen. And the shot no good. Put back no good by Sawulu, and the Cougars clear it. To Burks, moving in, reverse layup, missed it. 
And the tip attempt by Davis, no good. And now Burks with a steal from behind. He's going to slow some stuff down here a little bit. Going to see about uh, three-quarter court pressure man set up this time, and they're going to face guard Burks here. And you, you have to, especially when he gets, he gets hot. And they're not face guarding traditionally, but they're going to keep it close. Davis kicks it out. Colin Parker for a three. Yes. How about that? Good That'll shot. loosen up that defense. Yeah, well, great shot. Great opportunity there by Parker. Cash in from him. Uh, a big-time shot from Colin Parker. Nine points. You know, night. for a big man, he's got a pretty, pretty shot. Doesn't he, though? Really good shot. Oh, that's a walk. Yeah. Walking by May. Turnover. And, and, and with that nice shot that he's got, the, the other big thing is he's able to to pull out a guy like Sululu who's guarding him defensively, bring him out and open up the paint for other options like Burks to cut and drive, Trendon to cut and drive as well. Sululu can't hurt you if he's 20 feet out. Not like he can down low. <laughs> no doubt. Burks slides down the left side of the lane and he's slowed down by Josh Noten who fouled him. Yeah, Noten with a little bit of a wrap. They're going to call him for a hold, and, and certainly so. You can see him with that left arm kind of getting stuck in between in between Burks and the ball there a little bit. Parker will trigger. Allen with it on the wing. Now Tisdale. He wanted to let the three go. The penetrates. Beat his man, but can't hit the reverse layup. Rebound Stubblefield on the run out. And a block by Colin Parker. Big block by Colin Parker. As he slowed down, Quinnen Reeves. God. Great block by Parker there, as you see on the replay. Great opportunity, man. Just put it together. That's, that's a big one from him. Spinning with the hook. No good by Sawulu. Rebound boarded out of there by Allen. Great, great defense by Davis, too. Was able to go straight up there with Sawulu and, and not get body in that play whatsoever. Tisdale dishes it out to Burks in the corner. Parker down low. Davis fakes right goes uh, fakes left goes right. Got him some space and knocks it down. For being a freshman, too, Tex, he plays really smooth and and plays within himself as well. One point game. Central Methodist by one. The runner with a left hand won't go. Missing that shot was Jordan. Rebound, Sawulu. And sliding around on the backside <laughs> and picking his pocket, Brock Davis. Goodness gracious. We can't say a whole whole much more about him. He's got it on the block. Turnaround jumper from him. And in and Ooh. out. Man. Oh, he didn't spin it enough. 45-44. And a swipe by Allen to free it up, but it's picked up by the Eagles. Cougars getting really handsy here defensively. It's helping them get a lot of opportunities to get some steals. A quick jumper there put up by Stubblefield. But, boy, uh, being able to get hand on ball, that's a big thing. Big, big stat that doesn't go, uh, go charted. 47-44 here. 15 and a half minutes to play. What kind of finish is this one going to present? Tisdale with it out top. Left side, Allen. Marlin drives, shot partially blocked. They wrestle for the rebound. Jump ball called by Kelly Groom. I remember when Kelly Groom was refereeing with hair. <laughs> A couple days ago, right? Yeah. Just last week. Yes, yes. Three-point ball game. Central Methodist leads. Columbia will inbound from the baseline. Cara to throw it in. Oh, wide open washer. Oh. And they close quickly. They scramble, Washer has the trash and loses it, so Wulu gathers it in. Here come the Eagles. Into the corner with it there, Reeves. Swalulu trying to get free inside, Reeves out of the corner, no good. Kyle Parker with the board, and here comes Columbia. And that inbound play too is really nicely set up. Great box set, just could not finish. Washer with it left side. Carson Parker down low. Carson out to his brother Colin for a three. Won't go. And the rebound cleared out of there by Reeves. This shot's going to go. And a whistle and a foul. James Jordan 
with a left hand on the right side. Knocks down the shot, almost like an NBA play. Yeah. yeah and I believe it's Washer called for the foul. Boy, he, he went to work with it. Boy, man, what a, uh, what a tough shot by James Jordan, able to go 11 points from him, 5 of 11 from the floor, and he is taking his first free throw, and he'll cash in on it. It's the first guy not named Noten to take a free throw for Central Methodist today. Too. That's amazing. Washer with it on the right side. Parker. Kara spins to the baseline. Tie it up. Down low, Washer. And Sawulu called, I believe, for the foul. Yeah, I think so. I think it's his third, too. And he looks a little hurt. Yeah, he came up lame on the play. Yeah, almost is. like his knee hyperextended. Yeah. And he's hurt. Yeah, he's hurting. See a quick replay of that, but it really looked like his knee buckled. It's heavy traffic, or did he step on an ankle or something? Yeah, I'm guessing he. You would think that's what happened. 50 44, six point game. Not only did he come out hurting, but he was stuck with a foul. I believe that's his third foul, too, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was, too. Unless they stuck it on somebody else. They're still trying to sort it out. He is listed with three fouls. And also coming up is Washer. He's hobbling over on the sideline as well. So now Carson Parker's going to the line. Was he the original? No, it was Washer, wasn't it? Well, was that was say. fouled. Thought Washer was. was fouled. Carson is filling in. Carson Parker, 67% free throw shooter. Uh, actually, the opposing team can pick who you want to shoot it. Parker's free throw is in and out no good. Now, technical foul, you could ask. You, the you get to choose. Team yeah. does. Yep. He missed them both. Well, Columbia's going to get the ball back here. So it was tipped out of bounds off of uh, Reeves. And Cara will inbound from the baseline. 50-44. Columbia just can't get over that hump. They cut it to one, cut it to three, just can't get it over that hump. Nice give to Carson Parker. Head fake, bank shot good. Carson Parker gets the basket now with four points. Comes in here averaging eight plus five boards. Pretty quiet night from him, but he is he's making his presence known here a little bit more here in these early minutes of the second half he's getting. Jordan drives and kicks it back out. It's up for grabs, ran down by Cole Gherkin. Gherkin tried to give it to Burks, and maybe the Cougars a bit out of control. Back the other way is Jordan, and Jordan has it stolen by Gherkin, he might have been out of bounds. <laughs> and Columbia back the other way. Carl will slow it up. He'll just take it himself, but he is kicked out of bounds off of himself. Out of control. 50-46. Yeah. yeah, just a lot of lot of out of control basketball there by Columbia when, and really careless turnovers. We, we were talking about how the turnovers were minimal, yep. and, and there's two big ones. And that three-pointer no good. And here come the Cougars on the run out. And Burks used his body to get position and then is fouled by Quinnen Reeves. That's also Reeves' third foul. So now foul trouble becomes a thing to watch for the Eagles here. Reeves' is third has not played a whole lot, but that was because he has been, been kind of hindered because of that foul. That means Tony Burks goes to the line. Anytime a big guy picks up a foul this early in a game, that usually pays dividends down the stretch because things will get mm -hmm. condensed mm -hmm. down underneath as Burks missed that free throw. Will be 8 of 15 from the charity stripe tonight, 53%. Still struggling. That that's, yeah, that's, that's something that's got to improve to have success. To cut it to three. Burks got it. There's the, there's the start. Yep. 
12 points now for Burks. See if we can't keep Tony going here in this second half, under 13 to play. Trailing by three, Eagles with the basketball. Morris threw it away. He too was out of control. Kara gives to Gherkin, Gherkin finishes. There we go, Columbia on the run a little bit. Great ball movement, timeout Matt Sherman and Central Methodist. Great opportunities there by Columbia and that's set up from, from great hands in the passing lanes. It's a one point ball game, 50 to 49. We'll be back with more from the Cougar Dome in a moment. Don't miss a moment of breaking news. Download the ABC 17 News app for instant alerts and live video. A man has barricaded himself inside at home. With updates on the scene. The building has uh, been cleared. We brought in the Mid-Missouri Bomb Squad. Just turn on notifications in your phone settings so you never miss breaking news alerts. Live coverage just one tap away. ABC 17 News. Get the app. Get the alert. One point ball game, 50 to 49, 1244 to play. That's an eternity as Columbia and Central Methodist locked up in another good one. Last year, Central Methodist clipped the Cougars over in Fayette. It was a, a tough loss. I, I remember Columbia coming home from that loss, just talking to themselves, feeling like they let one get away. 62 61 last year at Fayette. Yeah, as we come down the stretch, come down the stretch here for this one, uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what Columbia continues to do. They've really caught Central Methodist off guard when they made that switch from zone to man. That's when Columbia forced that four minute scoring drought from them. And, and so, how does how does Coach Thomas Brock continue to get the the defense mixed up a little bit, but also keep them on their toes uh, over on the other sideline? Tara putting a little pressure on Stubblefield. Gets in, tied up. Into the corner. Deep in that corner, Morris. Morris, a shot blocked by Gherkin, recovered by Parker, Carson Parker. Fresh legs. Tara with it on the point. To the line. Kicks it out to Allen. Burks with it on the perimeter. Burks drives, left hand, got it to go. One hand shot, fading off to the left side of the rim, and it rolled in, and how, the foul. How about it, good movement again by Burks. He, uh, he said, I'm just gonna take it myself. He does so, left hand, like you said, through contact, still able to finish, big shot. Morris called for the foul, his first. He's a transfer from Eastern New Mexico University. Peoria, Illinois is his home. Columbia's first lead tax since it was 2 0. So excited about the way Burke scored that bucket. I forgot they took the lead. <laughs> Burke's missed the free throw. 19 0 2 in the first half is the last time Columbia led. Jordan works right and threw it away. Gherkin with it on the left wing. Gets it off to Cara. Cara with a great entry pass oh, underneath on the bounce beautiful. pass to Allen to finish it. Beautiful pass, threads the needle a little bit. Great finish by Allen, a little bit through contact. Good work there by Columbia, up three now. Their biggest lead of the game, 11:34 <laughs> to play. Run away with it. See what they can do here defensively. It's a big, big possession defensively for Columbia here. Knowlton drives it in the paint, draws a crowd, and a foul. Picking up Gherkin. the first, yep. Yeah. Gherkin's first and team's third. And not a lot of fouls in yeah. this game. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot. And really not a lot of whistles. Kind of enjoyed it. I was going to say, it's kind of nice, isn't it? Yes. Trent Lyles will trigger in. He's out of Sedalia and went to State Fair. Lyles averaging six points a game. Pretty good shooter. Haven't seen a lot of him tonight. A few wet spots over here by the CMU bench and Columbia 
We're going to try to clean that up. Burke's over there to check the wet spots as well. 11.22 to go, 53-50. Burke's with 14 points here in this one. And uh, 14 points, three boards. But the big one to talk about, if, if, if I had told you that Brock Davis was taking as many shots as Tony Burks tonight, you'd probably call me silly. Here he is. They've both taken 10 total shots tonight. Euro step and the runner no good by note. Great defensive possession. Columbia not needing to be in any hurry, just cash in points when they get them here. Karras runner is good. That's his first bucket of the game. Big time, big time basket there. Just at the 11 minute mark, five point Columbia lead. Big basket. Dalton trying to drive. Free throw line, jump shot, no good. Allen with the board. Kara up the floor to Gherkin. Gherkin drives, spins, kicks it out. Burks fakes, drives, baseline, runner high off the glass there. He makes nice. it look so easy, doesn't he? <laughs> nice patience. <laughs> really, that's patience. That's a Larry Bird type shot. It is, and he just, he does it with, with such smooth skill. I mean, that ball was so high off the glass, I didn't know it was going to even touch the rim. And uh, he just ma he makes it look so easy. Central Methodist forgot to, uh, they're forgetting about their teammates here. Here's a long three on the way, no good. Carson Parker with a rebound. I'm saying that one guy's trying to take on yeah. five. They got to yeah. start moving the ball instead of. Yeah, that, that's really how they got some of those acrobatic shots to go early on is they were still able to move the ball right now. Not doing it. Burks fires a long three, long rebound. It's going to be tipped out of bounds off of Carson Parker. Now, uh, Gherkin was trying to sell it. Well, we've got a break here at Columbia College. Cougars with a seven-point lead. What a run they've put together. 57 to 50. We're back with more in a couple moments. Windstone Entertainment Event Center is a one-of-a-kind venue featuring brands and quality fun right in your own backyard. Every Thursday night, twist and shout as Hambo Latham plays the hits from the 40s to the 80s. When Hambo gets to pickin', the dance floor gets a kickin'. Plus, enjoy great drink specials and a delicious buffet from the Windstone Kitchen. Windstone Entertainment Event Center is the place to be every Thursday night. At Popo's, we love our customers, and it looks like the feeling is mutual. Our family loves Popo's pizza. And we love the cookies, too. Their cheesy garlic bread is the best. The best pizza in Missouri, Popo's. Popo's! It can't be the atmosphere, it can't be the wings, the salad, everything is great. The best cookies anywhere. It's the best place to hang out with friends. Popo's is the best! It's our favorite pizza place. Popo's, come in and find out why people say we're the best. You're watching My Zoo TV, part of the networks of Mid Missouri. Seven point Cougar lead. Columbia trailed at the intermission by five, and they have really put the clamps on the Central Methodist Eagles here in the second half. They've cooled off, haven't they? Cooled off, only shooting 26% here in the second half alone. Four of 15 from the floor, 41% from the game. And how about the last four and a half minutes? They have not found a basket in the last four and a half minutes. Four turnovers in that time as well. Pushing up the floors, Lyles. Bounces it off to the left side to Jordan. And it'll be a Columbia foul. It'll go against Burks, I do believe. Yeah, it's been, been slow scoring offensively here for CMU. Only one field goal in the last seven attempts, none in the last five, and on a scoring drought of 447. Unbelievable. And they're going to extend it. Turn it over again as Cara races the other way and scores. Cara again finds the basket. Big one from Dodo there. 59-50, under 10 to play. 
Columbia just trying to run away here. Pass down low, shot put up and missed by the big guy, Thomas Sawulu. Long, long scoring drought. Can Sawulu change that here? Free throw opportunities to end the scoring drought, 5-15. Sawulu to the line, left hand free throws in the bucket. There it is. Man. Ken, it's great to have KZOU and the Networks of Mid-Missouri with us here tonight at the Cougar Dome. So Wulu misses the next one, Allen with the rebound. But special thanks to Cooper Bryan, our director, and John Hook, producer and engineer. Of course, Tim Fox with us as well, making sure everything runs smoothly. His pass down low to Allen is Broke it up, but a foul is going to be charged on the play. May picks up the foul. It'll be his second. And things are snowballing a little bit here on Central Methodist. 59-51, Columbia by eight. We're getting down to it where Columbia, where basically every possession is big, both way or another. Columbia is going to give it back after Allen goes up for the rebound on the missed shot. Couldn't haul it in. Central Methodist coming back. This is a big defensive possession, but more importantly, I think if you're CMU and your coach, Matt Sherman, you want to find a good looking shot. Run a set, get a shot off. Circling around Stubblefield. Brings it back to the top to Jordan. Jordan down low to Sowululu. And they threw it away again, and Burks could gather it in, but it went out of bounds. Last touch by James Jordan. They're just out of sync. Six turnovers in the last six minutes for CMU. And almost six minutes now without scoring. 8.15 to play, 59-51. Kara kicks it in the corner to Burks. Burks floater won't go. Rebound Stubblefield. He works it up the floor to note. Noted in traffic, leads to the bucket, did get it to fall, but the foul call. Noted to the line yet again. Four of five tonight from the stripe. And that'll go against Allen, his third. It's already the 16th foul now in Columbia. Actually, both teams with six. And Josh Noten to the line. Boy, he looks to score. Yeah. He's been really solid here tonight to tax 18 points, six of 11 from the floor, five rebounds, and he's played 23 minutes so far. Just gets, gets the work done when he needs to, catches on the second free throw. 59-53, just under eight to play, six point game. Kara down the left side of the lane, kicks it out to Burks. Burks steps back, two pointer air ball. Carson Parker. Columbia's possessions still. here, Tex, in the last few last few offensive possessions haven't really been that haven't really been that urgent to find a basket, which they don't need to, but it's also kind of taken the flow, I think, out of the offense a little bit. A little more ISO ball, not necessarily moving it as well as we were seeing there early on in this half. Cougar seem to Function best when they're in that transition. Stubblefield tied up, is able to get the ball over to Jordan. He'll circle around. Catches the screen, and they're gonna call that illegal. Yep. That's a big foul, too. That is four. Four, yeah. That's a big, big foul. You could almost argue on that one. Yeah, that he, was almost a legal pick and roll. Was uh, certainly interesting. To yeah, it was. was. We'll take it. Kara bounces it down low to Colin Parker. Been a little bit quiet lately. Colin with that right hand takes it in. He makes that look easy. Yeah, he does. Good work. Good work on the glass and. Uh, for the first time in a while, Columbia is shooting better than CMU. 45% now, 46% on the night. Floater by Stubblefield's an air ball. 
Run out by Davis, up the floor. Oh, great pass, and the finish with a dunk. Big time, big time play. Gherkin up the floor to Davis. Timeout taken, 63-53, 10 point lead Columbia. We'll keep it right here. You know the amazing thing though, Damon, is the combination of players that Thomas Brock has put on the floor. He has just kept Central Methodist out of any kind of flow to their game. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's kind of the biggest thing we, we were alluding to earlier on is just the fact that Columbia is being able to keep them on their toes. They're not sure what to guard, who to guard, because it really has been a lot of different guys at different points. We saw Burks get hot at the end of the first half. Really kind of came out slow. It was Davis who's got a couple of shots going. We've seen Kara go off for a couple of big shots. Parker hitting some. So really, it's been tough to guard because they just don't know who is going to have the hot hand at that possession. Now, I think, though, with all the quickness out there, it's really forced the transition game, the turnover, and then the bucket on the other end. Yeah, it's another yeah, big stat, Where it all too. starts with the defense. That's another big stat, too. 11 turnovers from uh, Central Methodist, two at halftime. Stubblefield being hounded by Kara and forces the shot. Didn't get the call. Rebound, Colin Parker. That's exactly what I'm talking about, though. Yeah. He, he took Stubblefield out of the game. Just making tough shots. We talked about it. They're not going to continue to make all the tough shots. Davis goes to work the block. He couldn't finish through traffic, and now he's going to get called for a foul as they're trying to head back the other way. Kind of a frustration foul. But, yeah, I mean, they weren't going to continue to make all of those tough shots through traffic, not going to be able to hit all of those contested shots like we saw in the first half. And, and really, that's kind of forced the hand here of CMU a little bit because that's where they started to go to that one-on-five on, one on ball a little bit that we talked about. May has not scored in this game, and he still hasn't. Gherkin with the board. Both teams in the bonus. Kara works right side, Gherkin. Columbia now by 10, largest lead of the game. Under six to play. Davis working on a baseline loss, but it goes right to Kara. Now to Gherkin, no look pass in the corner. Tisdale for three, no. And the rebound pulled out of there by the Eagles. Running it back the other way and missing the runner is Jordan. But Reeves tips it in on a follow, follow up. You know, Tex, one thing about this game, too, from Columbia is their hustle up and down the floor tonight. You talk about the transition, but even when they do have to go back defensively in the defensive transition tonight, they've been extremely solid in as well. Tisdale on the point. Nice pass down low. Davis finishes. Great pass. Great finish. Davis set up on a nice backdoor pass. No look from there. Uh, from Trendon, great opportunity. Columbia back up 10, five to play. On the move, noted, tied up, kicks it out, Stubblefield, Stubblefield to Jordan. Jordan down the right side, plows it into the defense, but a block and foul will be charged to Gherkin, I believe. And yep. Will be Gherkin's third. Eighth team foul, so getting close to that double bonus here. Late in this one, 10 point game, and James Jordan to the line to shoot. Left hand free throw is good. Nine point ball game. Burks will check back in here in place of Gherkin. Great minutes there, Tex, by Cole Gherkin. Great minutes. Yep, I really believe the combo him and Kara have really controlled the flow of this game. Or maybe disrupted him. Yeah, no doubt. Both ways, both ways. Controlled the flow and disrupted it. Timeout, Thomas Brock and the Cougars here for 48 to play. Cougars at the break. Trailed by five, 41 to 36. Both teams exchanged some blows early in the second half, but here down the stretch run, Columbia has, has controlled the flow of the game. And, they really did it with the defense. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, the defense has been solid 
throughout this one, and a lot of it has just been hands and passing lanes. I think that's the biggest takeaway is the hands and the passing lanes that Columbia has been getting over on the defensive end, forcing the hand of CMU to, to have to pass the ball, and, and when they do, they're kind of timid right now doing so. The other big number to look at, too, is Swolu still on the bench with 448. He's got four fouls, so they have to keep him out on the bench, but that's a big presence that they're missing down low right now. How long do you keep him on the bench? Yeah, that's a great question. But, you know, he's not really known for scoring a whole lot. No, but he's got eight rebounds, and I think that's the big thing is he is a guy that goes and gets a board when you need him to. He's leading both teams in rebounds right now, so... I think you've got to find a way to put him on the floor soon, just especially on the defensive side. Yeah, no doubt. He plugs that middle. Davis with it on the point. Right side carry, entry pass down low to Colin Parker with the right hand, won't go. Rebound, Davis on the weak side, put back, no. Next rebound, battled for. Still loose on the deck, rolls out to midcourt. And Tisdale's got it to Burks. Burks. Runners on the way, and it's good. And a block. Basket in the foul. It's going to go on Reeves, also his fourth now as well in this one. And so the old-fashioned three-point play coming up here for Tony Burks, 10-point lead for the Cougars. Burks may have been quiet the first seven, eight minutes of this game, but he's got 19 points now. Yeah, he's really popped off. The nice thing, too, is the guys that have been around him, Colin Parker, 11, Davis, 13 as well, uh, really just kind of pushed in some points here tonight. Stubblefield for three. Blocked by Davis, but the recovery picked up and shoved in by Reeves. Much better ball movement there by CMU, too. I think that also helped get that defense from Columbia moving side to side a little bit. They'll break the press, get it up the floor. Nine-point lead for Columbia in the basketball. That was Key and Reeves with that put back. Tisdale's three, no good. Maybe a little early in the possession. Oh, good move there by Noten. Hey, missed the shot. As it was Davis that came over to slow him down. You don't, Rebound see, Tisdale. you don't see Burks get uh, juked out too often like that. But, uh, boy, what a move. Kara works to the left. Parker, right side Burks. Cougars working the shot clock down a bit here. Now to Tisdale. Five seconds. And there's the foul. Burn clock, yeah. go to the free throw line. And it's such a late foul on the shot clock, too. There's three seconds left in the shot clock. Your coach, Sherman, you're not happy about it because you had the, the tough shot coming up and a chance to get the ball back, and instead you're giving up two free throws here. Yeah, 25 feet from the bucket, too. Yeah. Tisdale to the line, free throw on the way. Got it. Cougars warming up for the Williams Baptist Eagles who will be here Thursday night, part of a doubleheader. Conference opener for Columbia and Williams Baptist. Hard to believe we're in a conference play. Just about to say, early, early conference games, but um, you know, you, you've got to see where you're at in conference play, and it's a great opportunity to get started on the right foot. 70-59. Columbia now has pushed their lead to 11. Under three left to go. And Burks picks up the errant dribble, dribble and missed the shot, but he's going to the line to shoot free throws. A foul on Jordan, his second, and he'll go to shoot two. When's the last time they saw the Eagles move the ball without dribbling it up and down the floor like they did in the first <laughs> half? Yeah, that's, uh, man, what a, what a tough, tough second half shooting the basketball here. Burke's free throw is good. Well, you didn't even get a shot in that last possession. Right. Yeah, you just not getting the not getting the possessions that you're wanting uh, if you're CMU. Only sitting still at 26% in this second half. Four, uh, six of 23. And Burks opens up the lead. 13. 
the other thing too, Tex, we, we remember CMU was five of nine from deep in the first half. They're 0 and 2, 0 for 2 here, or 0 for 4 here in the second half. Double team took the ball away. Burks drives and splits a double team shot. No good. Davis persistent with the putback gets it to go. He's got 15 points. Big game from Brock Davis. Just outstanding night from him. Noten comes down, hits a three in transition. Just keep this ball game within reach for CMU here in the final 215. Kara moves it up to Burks. Cooker still got a little work to do here. 12 point ball game. A three point shot, things could change in a hurry. Colin Parker on the baseline. Kara penetrates, leaves it. Burks, again, the Cougars with three seconds, gotta get a shot now. Burks lets it go, no. Rebound, Allen and the putback. Big time rebound, big time putback, and a timeout by Thomas Brock. This is a great timeout, I think, here by Coach Brock to settle uh, things down, set the defense, and understand what's about to happen here with this 14-point lead here in the, mi in the final minute and uh, 47. We'll be back with more in a moment. Don't miss a moment of breaking news. Download the ABC 17 News app for instant alerts and live video. A man has barricaded himself inside at home. With updates on the scene. The building has uh, been cleared. We brought in the Mid-Missouri Bomb Squad. Just turn on notifications in your phone settings so you never miss breaking news alerts. Live coverage just one tap away. ABC 17 News. Get the app. Get the alert. What a turnaround. Columbia looking to win their fourth game of the year with a 76-62 lead against Central Methodist here at the arena of the Southwell Complex. And this will be a great boost for Thomas Brock's ball club going into league play to score this win. But I think more than anything else, the way they turned the flow of this game around. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it. We can continue to talk about it. Just the tough shots that CMU was able to hit in the first half. If you're a player and you see those kind of shots going in, that can really just take you out of it mentally. And and Columbia did not let that affect them, especially when your best player really wasn't scoring at that exact same time as well. They did not let it let it uh, go to waste whatsoever. Came back strong. Really started the second half on the right note, uh, like they needed to, and that's why we sit where we do right now. Stubble field chased by Kara. Pass to the left wing to Morris. Right side noted. That three's no good. Kara, boy, tell you what, he has played a heck of a second half. Hasn't he, though? Just controlled the pace of this game, both offensively, defensively. And sets up Davis for a trip to the free throw line. Good pass yet again. Just got stripped on his way up, but there was a reason he got stripped on the way up to Davis. And, and go try to cash in a couple more from the stripe. Only uh, one of two tonight. Fourth foul now on note. Who will be the first casually? Yeah. So a lot of guys right now with four fouls. Three throws in the bucket for Davis. Boy, what a game he's had. 16 points. 16 points, and, and again, he's taken the same amount of shots that Tony Burks has here tonight. 6'6", six, six, true freshman. Next shot, no good. He's a Tulsa native, Davis. Long three from the top from Stubblefield, no good. Burks with a big rebound, and boy, you can start feeling it now. The Eagles about to capitulate. You know, Tex, talking about Brock Davis, what a good find it that was for Coach Thomas Brock because now this is a guy, if he can continue to do this on a night-in and night-out basis, you've got a guy as a true freshman that can uh, be a leader for you moving forward in the next uh, next three seasons. Boy, that's a rock to build up. It, absolutely. Davis out of the corner for three. <laughs> How about two. that? They're going to call it a two on the line. He's going to want two scholarships. Oh, my goodness. 77-62. <laughs> Under a minute now left is the Cougars. 79-62 the score. Cougars now with a 17-point lead and a takeaway. Very and Columbia's going to have to get another shot off. They'll get it to Carr to bring it across. And 79-62, how about a great second half here by Columbia. Uh, and, and Coach Thomas Brock, he's going to run this all the way down. And 
And just you can't talk enough about the great second half that Columbia has put together here. Yeah, again, we thank our good friends at KZOU and the Network of Mid-Missouri's, John Hook and Cooper Bryant. Shot clock violation of ball will go back to Central Methodist. And it's great to have them on board. Not only did they do this men's game, but, of course, we're here for the women as well. The women lost tonight by a score of 78-62. And there is the final, 79-62. Columbia bounces back, snaps a two-game skid, and wins it by a final score of four, by a final score of 79-62. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. That's another alarm communication victory for the Columbia Cougars. Damon, thanks for joining us here this evening. Absolutely. A big win from Columbia. It's a big night, no doubt about it. Just great great numbers all the way around here for Columbia. And, uh, boy, what a what a solid day from, from good old Brock Davis as well. Final again. Columbia with a win, 79-62. to 62. And for the entire KZOU gang, we thank them, and we'll see you down the road. You all right, Dad? Just breathe nice and easy in and out. We need to apply more pressure on his wounds. I've got him. Just get us there, okay? 